Hi, and what's your name? Jasvinda Sangera. And can you just give us a little bit about your background? Yeah, so um, I'm here at the WAL because of the activism that I do, which is I represent the voices of victims who have been forced into marriages yes. or experienced honour based abuse. I'm a survivor myself. Yes. I was born in Britain and I was forced, well, my mother showed me a photograph of a man I was promised to at the age of eight. Wow. I was one who said no at the age of 14 years old and I was taken out of education, held a prisoner until I escaped. I left home at 16. My family never accepted me back and subsequently I've been disowned. So it's really my personal experiences that led me to developing the charity which is Carmen Nirvana. Amazing. So how, how did you, what, what was inside of you that, I mean, first of all you got out of the arranged marriage but then commit your time and your life to changing it? So like what, what do you think you've, that's inside of you that, that's inspired you to do that? I think from my perspective, um, and many charities are born out of their personal injustice and the injustices of others. It was my sister Rubina's experience of being forced to marry a stranger at 15. She went through with the marriage, but within her marriage, she suffered horrific abuse. And later on in her life, she committed suicide. She set herself oh, on fire so and she died. And it was her experience that led me to owning the absolute injustice of all this. Yes. And it was a turning point in terms of owning the fact that actually I've not shamed my family. I've not done this to them. They've done this to me. Yes. So I used that energy to develop the charity and to break my silence and the silences of others. And so are things changing for in Britain for, for women like yourself and younger girls that are facing that future? So, I mean, we marked 25 years as a charity this year and in 25-year journey, what we have seen are changes in terms of legislation. We now have a criminal offence of forced marriage, we have civil law, we have a national helpline. But sad to say, the attitudes in terms of people still believing this is part of your culture or your religion or your tradition still exists. So there are many professionals out there right. who still believe it and communities are still not coming out and speaking about this. Yeah. And whilst we have that, we've still got a long way to go. Although we have achieved a lot, we've still yes. got a lot more to do. Um, I heard you in the panel, it was a panel on shame, saying yeah. it's um, one thing we can do is shame politicians yeah. into action. Yeah, is that, um, what's, can you tell us about that conversation you've had with, the, with politicians? Yeah, I mean, I was born in Britain. I want to have the same level of protection as my white counterparts. It cannot yeah. be right that when it comes to somebody like me and I go missing from education, there's thousands do every year at risk of child marriage. You're not asking the same questions. You know, why is that? And we, we have to talk to that. We have to be honest about that. You know, I understand professionals are worried about being called a racist or they fear treading on cultural toes, etc. But that is wrong. So you almost have to shame people into having that conversation. You know, and I've done that throughout my activism. You know, why is it that I'm not being protected in the same way as my white counterparts? We've taken that to the highest levels, to prime ministers, etc. Because if laws don't exist, we need to create them to protect people. Or if laws exist and we're not being protected, then I'm going to shame you into protecting me too. If that's what it takes, it's what it takes. Yeah. And just say, we look at 2013 as the future, it's not that far away. What's the one thing you think would make the big difference if you could change one thing? If I could change one thing, yes. it would be to mainstream this issue as we think about child protection. Yes. And public protection for it not to be dealt with as different as other, yes. but somehow being different. I would want to see this in every school in the UK yes. where kids hear a counter narrative to what they're being taught growing up within their home environment. Yes. I want them to hear that you have the right to choose who you want to marry, to have half an hour on a national curriculum in a classroom so kids hear mm. that you don't have to do this, this is not justified by your religion, tradition, and culture, it's wrong. Yes. And then for them to know where to go. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And why are um, events like WOW so important, do you think? Well, Women of the World platform is in incredibly important because we've come collectively together. There is power in unity. We're all talking here the same language, breaking silences of many. And it is that strength that I take into meetings when I go into meetings. Yeah. You know, you're speaking to other people. It's not just me that feels like this. We've got the wild right behind us yeah. and in front of us. So it's that strength and unity for me, even when I leave here as well. Yeah. You take it with you. And it's it inspires you. This is a it's a lonely journey raising your yeah. head above the parapet. So you need to feel that energy yeah. and you take it with you. Particularly in what you're doing, you're amazing, so thank you so much for sharing your story and the work you're doing and I think a lot of that needs to happen in this country as well, so you're leading the way. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>